Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of What Women Binge. Amanda, you doing good? I love these special ones. Yeah, this is a special. We're one off in one because it's Christmas season and we have some special guests, some people that I've worked with in the past. So I want to bring in right now are my friends Juliet and Keith Gillio. They have written so many of my movies and so many other movies besides the ones that I've done and worked on. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you guys today for so many reasons. We have a history of Christmas. I'm in my tacky sweater. It might make Very some good. jingle sound, so, you know, be careful. Uh, I'll be careful. I thought careful. I'd go back on set. <laughs> <laughs> right? We're sitting here watching you in a, in a funny sweater. It's I'm always in a funny sweater in front of you guys. Um, I don't think you've yeah. ever seen me when it's not Christmas. And no. you have a <laughs> book right now that's that's come out, and it's called The Summer of Christmas. So we want to talk to that talk to you about that a little bit. But let's talk about let's talk about Christmas movies, everybody's favorite holiday pastime these days. What do you guys think about like it becoming I mean, do you agree with me that like it seems like it's like a newer genre? Oh, it is. Yes, it totally yeah. is. And I've heard people refer to it now as a genre, yes, which is exactly. like it's a... you wouldn't have heard that like 10 years ago. I kind of think it's replaced the rom com because we used to see a ton of rom coms, but it that's what it is. It's it cool. replaced it. Okay, it's okay. But it's not when replaced it, every but... network is doing it now. It's a it's a subgenre. It's mm -hmm. added to, you know, right besides horror and rom coms. And yeah, you can have like there's a um a David Harbour movie coming out about about like he's, it's oh, like he's a like violent a... diehard kind of Christmas. And he's and Santa. So it's kind of and there's the rom com. Yeah. To he he yeah. made he's there when a house a house invasion. Oh, that's so, the violent night, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, wow, what a name, too. I know. But uh, my point is that that's kind of like a thriller Christmas movie. And it was, we do rom-com Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's true. So um, so we've done, let's see, I want to name the movies that we've done together. So you wrote A Very Nutty Christmas, which was such a fun one. It literally takes so, the premise of The Nutcracker, right? Mm -hmm. You want to give us a little well, backstory? Yes. Oh, so that was... We love Christmas so much, and I have a million nutcrackers. And so we had this idea that mm -hmm. what if a nutcracker came to life? We always love like Splash and, and Elf. Elf. Yeah. We wanted to always do something in that realm. And then and the, you were the perfect person you to were the do perfect it. Person. We and met with your mom, and she was, wow, we love the nutcracker. I'm like, who doesn't love the nutcracker? And, and it, it was fun because we took, we basically followed like the thumbprint or the footprint, I should say, of, of the nutcracker and told it through that story, which mm -hmm. was so fun. But the idea of getting a nutcracker working in a bakery shop, cracking nuts. <laughs> it looks like that's the trailer to see. When you're lying in bed thinking about how this movie's going to roll, how are they going to do that? And it was just it was just fun. That movie was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I got to bake a lot. We, I ate a lot of cookies. It was yeah. uh, uh, Barry Watson played uh, the Nutcracker. Oh, fun. And yeah, and then, um, and, and that was my second movie I'd done with him. And Funny enough, it's the second movie I had done with him, but also that both movies with him are movies that ended up not having like a traditional happy ending. Because of course my character can't end up with a man that's made of wood because at Christmas he goes back to Woodland or wherever, you know. <laughs> so oh, they had to come up with an inventive way for it to still be a happy ending. So that must have been, was that a little tricky for you? I remember we talked about that a lot before we went yeah, to it, it, it really was tricky. And there was a moment where we wanted to be like kind of a, a heaven can wait moment too. Right. Whereas that you see this other guy when he does show up and there's kind of that twinkle in the eye of like, there's something special there's about something him. There's something there. He echoes the same line that Barry's character said. Yeah. But we had different incarnations, but uh, it, it worked on. Then the, the, it was tricky, though, because it, and you're, I think that's what works so well about that movie. We so want you to be with Barry or the Nutcracker, but we know you can't. Mm -hmm. And it's that bittersweet thing. Yeah. But it's still... Yeah, it's, no it's tricky. It's they don't tough. do that often. Like Christmas movies, just don't do it often. Where it's not tied up with a nice bow. It's not the, um, and and I like that you guys wink at this in your book. But like ending up with the guy from the small town that mm -hmm. you were supposed to end up with from the beginning, right? Like, oh, so there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, back to the summer yeah. of Christmas, um, which yeah. I have spent many summers Christmas. But um, yes, you have. Then I one have. of my, I mean, I loved being doing Nutty Christmas. But I, it was funny because Christmas Reservations is another one you guys wrote that, that was cast. A fun one. Yeah, that remember, cast uh, was stellar. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, I mean, you we had a Marky yeah. Post and Michael Gross played my dad, who Amanda got to meet this summer at um, so kind at the Derby, nicest guy ever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh my gosh, we had so many amazing cast members. Uh, Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo Shavera. 
Um, who actually just like DM'd me today or something. Like, yeah, we all keep in touch, and and uh, that whole cast is just lovely. Right. Oh, and Mooney. We Mooney. saw Mooney, Mooney. this summer uh, when we were doing something with the L.A. Public Library, yeah. and she popped in, and oh. she said that there's like a chat line, and they all, all oh, actors talk. like We talk. all talk, yeah, and yeah. we still have Marky. Yeah. Even though Marky, our beloved know, Marky Post, was, passed away, we still so have her husband on there, so we keep in touch with her. Um, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but that yeah. one was so interesting for me because that one I had a hard time with because I was more it was a very much an ensemble movie, mm-hmm. but I didn't um, I I guess I had a hard time with it because I was like right away when you pull up to the hotel. So my dad and I, Michael Gross and I, run a hotel and the you know every, all the guests are showing up and as they're showing up, you kind of immediately wink wink at who's going to end up with who. You know. Yeah, and I was like, this is. The, uh, where's the suspense of who's going to end up with who? It kind of all lays out right in the beginning, and I had to think hard about it. And it was the love boat. It reminded me of the love yeah, boat. Yeah. yeah, right. It, it is. And I think it's it's the process. Yeah. It's we know everyone's going to get it, but it's the journey, is the process that you go through, mm-hmm. and, and how you get there, and and that's the fun of it. Yeah, and um, we had a dog too. But oh really- my gosh, we had a dog. <laughs> and the cat trainer from Sabrina came and trained the dog. So that was fun yeah. to see her again. There was another dog I think your mom fired. Yes, your mom <laughs> fired a, my dog. We got there. I go, how's it going? We had to fire the dog. Oh, no. That's right. She said, she said to us, never ride another dog in a movie. <laughs> I know, never work with animals and kids. And I've done both very, yeah. very often. Um, a lot but Melissa, frequently. that movie really came about because of you, because I remember we were on the set yeah. of Nutty, yeah. and you said, ooh, you know what would be fun is to have a movie set in Lake Tahoe a ski in a ski lodge. And we love the movie Love Actually, so we immediately started thinking about it, and that's how it came about. Yeah, so, and it was it was brilliant for me because I had just come off a, a TV show in L.A., and I was living in Tahoe, and so I got to – just drive down the hill and do a movie. Be like, home. Be home. And like the set was, we we just stayed inside this beautiful hotel in Lake Tahoe for I think three quarters of the movie we were in this hotel. So it was a controlled environment. It was beautiful. It was uh, fun. It was easy. That so sounds ideal. It really was. And that's and the crew from that movie is the crew that's followed us around. So since yeah. then we've done Dear Christmas. We did Dear Christmas in Tahoe also. You guys wrote that one. At the same time as you were kind of, you also wrote Christmas in Tune, which is the one we did with Reba McIntyre mm-hmm. last year. So mm-hmm. Dear Christmas was the one I did two years ago with Jason Priestley. We haven't had him on yet. We're still trying to, I'm trying to drag him in the studio. He's a little shy. But I still got to get Jason in. Does he live down the street from you or something? He lives three doors down, literally. Yeah. And I have to go like, I'm going to have to go like drag him by Knock the ear. Knock on the door, literally yeah. like pull him out. Come on, we're doing a podcast. Why don't you tell him, invite him to an ugly ugly sweater party and then surprise him. (laughs) Wait, I'm going to tell you that story. There's a great story there. Last year at the ugly sweater party, Jason and his wife came in, and who are lovely people, totally lovely. But Melissa had not prepared anyone for the fact that they were coming. I don't go like, so Jason Priestley and Patricia Heaton will be here later. So I know, behave yourself. I like, know. It's so normal to you. But for the rest of us who live normal lives, <laughs> we're all just sitting there chit chatting and they walk in and you could audibly hear the air sucked out of the it room. It was a movie scene. I've never just... experienced anything like it. And everybody turns to look at them. And I'm sure they may never want to come back to your house again after that. It was, it was so such an awkward moment. They walked in the front door, whereas everyone else kind of comes in the side door. And I didn't know that they had come in. And literally the room dropped silent. And I was like, what? <laughs> in- <laughs> this is a room full of, like, school moms. So it's football right. moms. We're all looking moms. at our, like, Everyone's being ridiculous. high school crushes, you know, or childhood crushes. Right. And it's just like, Ugh. And all, all like of a sudden, it was literally like, I thought the tree was on fire or something. I turned around, I'm like, what? What just happened? And everyone's like, oh, Jason's here. I was like, it, was, it was wild. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hi. <laughs> oh. That is so funny. Well, I, I do remember being really bummed that we couldn't get to the set for Dear Christmas. Right. I was, and oh, everyone COVID. kept asking, me, did you meet Jason? And I'm like, no, COVID. Right. <laughs> well, and you guys can probably talk to the fact that it was the perfect COVID. Like, it was the perfect COVID movie. Like, we had done one before. I had directed Felice Navidad with Maria Lopez. But the one I did right after that. So we were, like, the first movie up and running with Felice Navidad um, mm-hmm. on, like, June 3rd. We were mm-hmm. up and running, which was unheard of in 2020. But then yeah. about a month or two later, we decided, well, they threw Dear Christmas into production very quickly because we knew it was a good COVID-friendly right. movie. But what did you guys, you guys had to do a little adjustment there, too, for that. Yeah, so we did a big adjustment, yeah. So anytime there was, like, there was a Christmas party 
We didn't see the party. We saw you and Jason in the making backyard drinks. making drinks. Making in the drinks. North. Making drinks, yeah. Um, um, there was the fireman's ball, and Melissa was late, yeah. and that's why we didn't see everyone there. Yeah. And so she has like a solo oh, dance. Floor. I show up that's, late, and we're by ourselves. That's a really yeah. smart way to handle. Yeah, it, things though. like we were at the like I'm I'm a podcaster. Funny enough, I'm a podcaster in that one, <laughs> and, and I'm uh, I'm Number in the studio. One. The number one podcast. Number one podcast. That's right. We're we still are, trying to we goals. Are, goals. Hashtag. Yeah, yeah. But that was good. even that yeah. one, even the very beginning of the movie, I'm in the podcast studio and we just have my mom walks oh, the by the window as an extra and then Robin Givens, who plays my boss, walks in. So it's like, and, and she's, she's like, like, you know, there's a party. Oh, party. Yeah, there's yeah. a party going on out here. If your doctor can recite every line from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off but can't remember your name, it's time for a new doctor with ZocDoc. Yeah, it's a great movie, but ZocDoc makes it easy to find quality doctors in your network and in your neighborhood. Before you book any brunch, you pour over lists and lists of reviews, right? Mm -hmm. So why not do the same when you're booking a doctor's appointment? Finding the right doctor is just a as, if not more important than finding the right plate of eggs benedict with zocdoc you can see real verified patient reviews to help you find the right doctor in your network and in your neighborhood after all plus with real verified patient reviews you can find the right doctor for you one that actually remembers your name mm -hmm. zocdoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed take your insurance and are available when you need them go to zocdoc.com wwb and download the zocdoc app for free then start your search for a top-rated doctor today Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash W-W-B. ZocDoc dot com slash W-W-B. So everything was like the party's in the other room. The party's in the other room. The yeah. It was brilliant. Never see it. We only had five speaking parts. I think five, right? So it was yeah, me, five. Jason Priestley, yeah. Robin Givens, Ed Begley Jr., Faith yeah. Prince, and Nikki yeah. Whelan. Yeah. Six. Six. And then we had one uns no speaking part, which ended up being a speaking part. And funny enough, it was our first AD, our first assistant director, right. who yeah. played a role. Like yeah. he was on yeah. set. But then when we had to add a line later, it actually was my husband's voice that did it. So just like technically my husband's in the movie. That's awesome. And, that then, funny? and then we had testimonials from people overseas. Oh, right. yeah, so yeah, yeah. So that could be popped in as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. I forgot about that. My stepdad is one of them. And like it was, yeah. we yeah. had some people um, put themselves on tape, just like couples put themselves on tape. That's perfect. And that pops in the movie, but they were never there. It was literally done on Zoom. So it was like the perfect COVID movie. Yeah, that it was, was a fun one. It yeah. was done, yeah, done that way. Yeah, was, yeah. No, we were about testing your creative strength. <laughs> like, yeah. Can you <laughs> adjust yeah. this in a world? And, and writers, in some ways, I think that that movie was even stronger because it was so character based. Like right. we couldn't have any like big splashy sets. Like yeah. it had to just be about the yeah, people. people. And, and, and you and Jason had fantastic. Chemistry. You guys had so much chemistry. I remember watching that movie with like my whole family and, and just being like, oh my God, this is so good because you were so, it was so oh, believable. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, funny side note on that. Um, we weren't supposed to have a kissing scene because of COVID. We were not oh. required to do a kissing oh. scene. But the director, she asked me, she was like, you know, would you, it was supposed to be that as we go in for the kiss, the camera drifts off and sees the family watching us in the window. And yeah, so I remember wrote that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's nice. So then, um, so, but the director was like, oh, it would just be so great if you guys just kissed. And I was like, all right. Thinking this day and age, we do three takes, we're done. You know, we have to move the right. camera, so I'll have to do it nine times or whatever, like, you know, from one angle and then a close up and a close up. Well, we ended up doing a billion takes from uh -huh. numerous angles and different sizes. And not no. only that, this is the most horrific, this will never leave me. My nephew, I had hired my nephew as our, um, his name is Hayes. He's super adorable. He was 18 at the time, and he was our boom operator. So he's standing <laughs> behind whoever's not speaking, right? He's standing next to the camera holding the boom mic up and over the us. To right? capture your kissing capture noises. It. So when it was my close-up, <laughs> he is right behind Jason. He is in my eye line. I am looking basically so at him awful. but trying not, like, trying to, like, I'm looking at Jason, but I can see him right behind him. And I'm having to kiss someone who's not his uncle, oh. you know, my oh. husband. And mm -hmm. not only can he not close his eyes because he has to see if the boom is up just above my head the right amount, he also has to hear every bit of it very closely. Oh, <laughs> oh it was horrible. It was <laughs> He and I didn't look at each other for probably three months. 
Yeah. Oh and our relationship God. is very different now. Like, I'm sure. Oh I was like, God. you do know that, like, I love your uncle and that's not like, it, that was just wor- a work thing, right? Like, you know. Wow. We kind of touched on it a little bit, but we just kind of. He's like, we don't need to talk. We don't. We, yeah, we, we ignore <laughs> that fact. Yeah. And also another funny note above us in the alcove of the house we were filming in. Well, first of all, that we had a lot of wildlife. We were in Tahoe. There were bears in the trash outside, and they scraped up our catering truck. They tried to get in because we were having salmon one day, and they tore up the the catering truck, so production had to pay for a new truck. And we also, while we were filming the kissing scene, right above us, there were two bats, and as soon as they turned on the hot lights, one of the bats flew away, and the other one kind of, like, kept creeping around and stuff. But the other one would come back and check on it and leave. That bat was above us all night long. It was freaking Like, hair and makeup wouldn't come near me. But I would, I, it didn't bother me. And I realized it was a baby bat and its mom kept coming to check Aww. on it. it. I think it couldn't Aww. leave. It was a little disoriented from the lights. It was in the oh. hotel. No, because the kiss was outside. The kiss no, was outside, just, in the doorway. Yeah. Was outside. yeah, it was outside that really Yeah, like, house. like the little right. alcove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then we have we to talk about Christmas in Tune also, the one yeah. you guys wrote that we um, got Reba. Reba produced it with us and... Um, I didn't get to be in that one, but our lovely friend Candace King, I don't yes. know if you guys know, but like now we're really close with Candace. That's how I know that. Candace. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Oh, uh, and John okay. Schneider was in that one, right? Oh, John Schneider. Yeah. yeah. Another yeah. friend of ours. That yeah. was a yeah. lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that one was, you know, my dad always wanted to be a Sloan singer. So that was kind of like a little, uh, nod to him. Right. And we, yeah. we always love the idea of like a, a couple of long time broken up gets together and we work together, they work together. So mm-hmm. it yeah. was fun to do that banter. Yeah. So, how was that with you guys working together? Like, what kind of fights do you guys get into? <laughs> oh, uh, the, the, knives, the knives are the lock and key. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. We used to get in a lot more fights, but now I think we're just like, oh, okay, whatever. We're tired. We're tired. <laughs> um, and now we have two computers. We used to work on one computer, and that was horrible and i remember one time when i broke my wrist and so i couldn't type for six weeks or change diapers or change diapers yeah it's a diabolical uh, plan (laughs) she broke her wrist Um, how unfortunate for you (laughs) roll of lighting i roll of lighting yeah roll of skating in venice not not venice italy venice california yeah so wait when you guys write do you write like is it like a cop show where you're like facing in the same desk on different sides of it or you like not looking at each other even different rooms like how does that work we're currently uh, living in New York City during our sabbatical, and because uh, we just had a granddaughter. So too. we're here. We're yeah. sitting kind of side by side, but normally at home we have these two desks that face each other, and so we're each on our own laptops and we're facing each other, and, and that works pretty well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. So yeah. do you guys strictly do Christmas now, or do you do other genres of writing? <laughs> well, is there there's is there another genre? I mean, <laughs> I'm full Christmas year round. So it's the hot genre. Let's. That's... Yeah, this has been a nice little um, table. And I always said, agent once said, um, "What happened at Paramount? You crapped out. We'll go to Disney." So the Christmas movie has been fun. And like yeah. Julie said, we always wrote romantic comedies, and people just stopped making them for a while. And they were getting made on Netflix, but you know, kind of uh, not our sensibility. A lot more. Mm-hmm. Kind of like we a, like writing family fair that the whole yeah. family can see. Yeah. And so this wound up coming back, and you know we had this in, wonderful run, you know, with Paula and Melissa making these movies, and that just led to the Christmas book. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah, tell us about the summer of Christmas. Yeah. So the summer. Of, yeah, you want to talk about that? So yeah. So the summer of Christmas, um, it kind of evolved because someone, uh, an agent, a literary agent, knew that we'd been writing these Christmas movies, and she loved the movies and said, "Hey, have you ever?" She met with us and said, "Have you ever thought about writing a book?" And we just kind of scratched our heads and we thought, "Actually, no, but that would be an interesting challenge." Mm-hmm. And so we pitched her like the one idea we had for a book. Which and she said, I love it. Yeah. And so we ended up writing, it was kind of unusual the way we did it. Normally, when you write a novel, you have to write the whole novel. And then your agent takes it out to like 10 publishers and and they try to sell it. Mm -hmm. But in our case, we thought, you know what? Let's just write three chapters and then we'll give summaries of all the other chapters and put it together in a proposal. And that's what our agent, she said, okay, well, let's try it. Yeah. And we, we sold it. We not only sold one, but we got a two book deal right. with source books. So this is the first, and then there is a second book. Oh, that, is yeah. it the winter of Christmas? No, no, that, that, no that would be smart. That would be smart. <laughs> yeah. Where were you? Well, so Amanda, I know that I have personally 
abused my hair from curling it, straightening it, hairspraying it, over processing it with different coloring, bleaching. We've yeah. all done damage to our hair over the years. So if you're like me and struggle to have longer, thicker hair after years of damage, then you have to try Vegamore. Vegamore has transformed my hair. Their holistic approach to hair health uses smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, and longer looking hair. Yeah, with help from Vegamore, you can get healthy, beautiful-looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals, and all their products are cruelty-free and never contain parabens or hormones. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. The Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. Just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with the conditioner. It's as simple as that. Having Vegamore as my go-to shampoo and conditioner is a game changer for my overall hair health. With Vegamore, there's no risk when trying because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. Don't let the damage of the past hold your hair back. See your hair's full potential with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash WWB and use the code WWB to save 20% on your first order. That's Vegamore, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash WWB and use our code WWB so you can save 20% at Vegamore dot com slash WWB. Thank you, Vegamore, for supporting What Women Binge. Let's talk about the first one. Yeah. First one. Yeah. So this is available on Amazon and everywhere, right? Barnes and Noble, a lot of local bookstores, which is really fun. Text us. We'll come to your house, bring a copy, whatever you want to do. We've been doing a book club. Oh, you should be doing book clubs. Yeah. That's so fun. Anyone wants um, us to, or me, well, we we read it. Amanda and I read it. And so we loved it. So, yeah. Well, why don't you want to give us a little, give us the, the summary. Well, the summary basically is about the making of a Christmas movie in upstate New York. And it's something that we've learned a lot about recently. But we love the idea of this of this young screenwriter and her movie gets greenlit. And she has to go back to the hometown where her ex-boyfriend who dumped her five years ago lives. Mm -hmm. And to make matters worse, the movie that they're filming is actually autobiographical and is all about them dating from when they were little kids, when they met at a nativity scene Mm -hmm. and and breaking up. And it sort of has this fun Pirandello aspect, which we love. Right, because you have the actors playing the characters in the book. It's kind of fun. And, um, yeah, it's always been our New York-L.A. argument, because we live 20 years in L.A., but always miss New York. And then live in New York, we miss L.A., you know. Yeah. So which coast? Which coast did she? (laughs) Right. And then then it always came about, because when we were making um, Nutty, you know, we drove a, a day early to the set, and you were already filming. And we said, oh, let's wander over to Mystic. Let's go see the aquarium. We saw the aquarium. And the baby Mystic, movie. the Mystic Aquarium in Mystic, Mystic Connecticut. And we started wandering into this village, and like, why is there snow on the street? Right? And we go, well, why are people decorating for Christmas already? And we're kind of wandering, and then we see people walking around. We realize we've wandered onto our own set. And we had, <laughs> we had no clue. And uh, it was so funny. And it was a beautiful man. set. That was a, Mystic is a beautiful place, but it is so funny. On that movie, um, Barry and I had to do some ice skating, and we, of course, it was July and blistering hot, and we had uh, had to do an ice skating scene, and they brought in like white plexiglass, and I got I got snow blindness from this from the scenes I had to do on no. the ice rink. Yeah. yeah, for two days I couldn't see straight. Like oh, I couldn't wow. see without spots in my eyes. I had to go home and and close my eyes. I had migraines, which I'd never had. Like bad right. headaches and just I like I just it was think so bright. Yeah, it burned out my my really retinas. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember right. when we wrote the ice skating scene. I kept waiting for Paula, Melissa's mom, to cut it because I thought, how is she going to do this? How is she going to do ice skating? We did it. And that you did it. And, I'll it and so that's why that scene is in the book. Right. Right? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. A fun thing. Yeah. So it's just so funny. It's like those. I've been begging, begging. I usually do these for Lifetime, sometimes Hallmark, but usually Lifetime. And I'm like, please, can I do one in the winter? Can I do one when there's real snow <laughs> and it's cold and I'm not sweating trying to ride a horse in Montana? You had it in Christmas res, because remember, you still had an 80-inch base of snow, and you actually were skiing. Yes, remember? in Tahoe. Yes, that's right. I don't even know if we kept it in the movie that much. I think it's a... Well, they didn't actually get me on tape, on film, going down the mountain on skis. But yes, in Christmas reservations, I... There's a skiing scene, and we were supposed to do. It was mainly on a ski lift, but every time I went up the ski lift, Ricardo would actually turn around because he didn't have skis. I mean, he didn't really ski or whatever. But I would go zipping down the mountain, 
And I was like, well, turn the camera and get me coming down the mountain. And I did it the first time, and they were like, oh, we didn't roll. So I was like, all right, well, this time roll. And then oh, I came course. down again. I was like, did you get that time? And they were like, oh, we we forgot. I was like, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. There, there is a shot of you skiing or somebody skiing. I think they got a little bit at the very end or something, or yeah. they did it with a double. I was like, that's really unfortunate because – and then all of a sudden I was like, I could do it again, but if I do it again, I have a feeling now I'm going to get hurt, and then I'm not going to be able to finish this right. movie. So yeah. now I was kind of freaking out about, like, I feel like there's a reason I'm not supposed to do this. Yeah. <laughs> because it is in my contract I'm not supposed to do any skiing at all, oh, but I always oh, do that. It's like We'd my favorite hobby. The, we would have had to rewrite the whole second half of the script. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in a cast, and he has to carry me around. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the dog is there for. It's like my... Uh, <laughs> You're my service animal. dog, yeah. but it's not. <laughs> yeah. But that's so awesome. So what do you think the um with the book, is it was it harder to write a book or did you find it easier? It's a really good question. Right. We're, we're, it's different. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah. So I always equate it to this. You get used to screenwriting. We know before the Christmas movies, Cinderella story, other stuff for Disney, we were doing. So you always talk about screenwriting has, you only show the tip of the iceberg. And you have great actors. You really don't have to show everything that's on the deal, all the, all the backstory and everything. Mm -hmm. And in a, in a book, you know, in a movie, uh, you know, mom will throw a baseball to her son and it'll hit the son in the head, right? In a book, the mom throws the ball in the air and then she remembers the day her son was born. Her daughter. Her daughter was born. Okay. And then remembers that, remembers this, remembers that. Women had to move four times, blah, blah, blah. And like seven pages later, finally hits the kid. You get all this exposition. And so that was the big difference. Yeah. You have to write so much more exposition. And it's also like a screenplay is 100 pages, more or less, and a book is at least 300. Mm. And so that's the other thing around it. But... I think screenplays are really hard to write because they, they have to be so tight. And everything has to be perfect. Whereas a book is longer, but you have a little more room for error. Yeah. Somewhere. Well, especially <laughs> these like these um, made for TV movies, they have to be 82 minutes, which mm -hmm. by the way yeah. is very quick. Is it 82? I thought we had 88. They cut, they cut six minutes. <laughs> uh, I think they, a lot think can happen in six minutes. I think we're down to 82 oh, guys. I think my last movie was 82 and it was, it was, it killed me. We had to cut 19 minutes out of our edit, out of my, oh, my director's oh. cut for our movie Santa oh. Boot Camp that's airing very quickly, very soon. Already has. Yeah. Technically. Oh yeah. But, um, but uh, so, uh, I, okay. So we have to ask you guys the questions we ask everybody. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, we're ready. We're ready. We're done. All right. If you could live life as any character from a book, show, or movie, who would it be? Okay. I would love to be Emma, especially in the <laughs> oh. recent um, Anna Taylor Joy. Yes. She's got this great house. She gets to live with her dad. I love my dad. My dad is great. And, uh, and then she has this really cute guy who lives next door. And she gets to, like, try to match make all her friends and get them together and mm -hmm. throw parties. And then eventually the guy's like, please marry me. And she's like, well, come live at my house. And you're like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I Her friend, like, you, you do it with that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not going to be Mr. Darcy. You're not be Mr. No, it's not. I know. It's not Darcy. I know. It's, it's a, a different, different book. Movie. Different. <laughs> that's Pride and Prejudice. I, I, I'm going to go classic. I'm going to go. Richard Blaine from Casablanca. Like, oh, oh, that's a great one. Yeah. He just, a Jaws guy. Uh, uh, Shida, I could have done Shida too from Jaws, you know, comes to a small town, like, leaving LA, moving to Syracuse, just, just relax and then everything goes crazy. What does he say? Uh, like, that's that's some big boat, Bob. What does he say? What's this line from Jaws? <laughs> Uh, but Casablanca still has my favorite lines, and I just I love the person who's like, I'm done, I'm not getting involved. Uh, hell, I have to get involved again. Mm -hmm. and I love the ending, but that, that would be my line. Very cool. Um, <laughs> if you had to pick a genre to describe your life, would it be Christmas? Just kidding. What, what would your genre be? No one said tragedy. That's good. No, I know. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would say rom com. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a rom com. Yeah, it's a rom com. Um, yeah, we, we had a meet cute. We met in an elevator when we were both at NYU grad school. Oh, yeah. is this the second book? Are we going to get your story? Um, a little bit. The second book is a little more of our story. No, so, the yeah, we were, um, two I like that. Book, yeah. yeah, we were at film school. I was a year ahead because I had gone straight from college to NYU grad film. And it was the first year was probationary. So they kicked out 30% of the class. 
And so I'd gotten through that, but now this young, very nice woman <laughs> goes into the elevator and she looks like she's going to burst into tears. And I, I, you know me, I'm very quiet and very supportive. I'm like, yeah, so what happened? You had a really bad script conference with Roberta, who's our notorious teacher. Oh. And, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 and then, so we flirted a little, elevator doors open, and she ran away. And we started, we started dating for like three months later. And three months later. Yeah. Well, Keith, did you just like keep stalking the elevator? You just stay in the elevator until she came I, back I, again? I, 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 I keep looking for I set up a chair. I just sat in the elevator. <laughs> you pretend to be the elevator? What, what he floor? became the operator. What floor? <laughs> I was in that elevator pressing buttons. Floor. <laughs> That's a I good, that, that would be great in a movie. That's funny. The guy who just stalked. The guy who I think incessantly. they did that in like How I Met Your Mother or something, I feel like. <laughs> um, if you could choose any actor or actress to play you in your life story, who would it be? Wow. Oh, I know. Oh. Everyone said it looked like uh, uh, Michael Imperiari uh, from uh, Sopranos. A little bit. <laughs> <I can laughs> <do that. laughs> but I don't know. Uh, I'll take Krasinski these days. I'll take Johnny. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I okay. I would love that. Uh, I'd, wait a minute. I'd want John Krasinski. I'll take, you know, Matt Damon, and I'll get, I'll get Michael Charlie Lee. Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, what about you? Uh, I would take Claudia Schiffer. Oh, Ooh. yes. We could stop there. <laughs> There's um Kevin Nealon's wife, uh Susan. Um, oh, what is her name? Jaeger. She. Y- she could be you. She could play you so yes. well, Juliet. She's funny. She's beautiful. I mean, you guys actually really favor, favor each other. Yeah. But I she's, look yeah, look her up on online. She's, she takes the most amazing Instagram. Like, I think Kevin does Yagley. the. Yagley. Yagley. Susan, like, Yagley. Yagley. But she's known as okay. Sookie, I think, on Instagram. Yeah, Sookie Yagley. S-U-K-I Instagram. or something. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, in your opinion, what's the best TV theme song? Which, oh, oh, best TV theme song. Cheers. Mm-hmm. You don't Cheers. want to say something. That was mine too. I got myself a gun. <laughs> I, I still love the Cheers theme song. I just love it. Yeah, yeah that is that is really catchy. I think name. that yeah, yeah, I would say that too. That's a good one. We agree on that. Um, do you guys have a movie show or channel that you turn on to tune out? Like, is there something that you guys enjoy together? Oh yeah, we yeah. watch everything together. Yeah. Um, what do we? Oh, not I, not I would everything. say. Not oh, that's true. Not, I'm not watching that. Um, what? What was that show you're watching the other day? I said you can watch without me. Endor? No, I said I'd watch Endor. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, what do we do now? I would probably say when it's sports. You know, we were watching, yeah, we were watching that's baseball, that's but that's that's not a TV show. Yeah. show. Yeah. No, we we some, like some sci-fi stuff. Well, so we respect the writers and we watch it very seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actors, we respect the actors. We don't tune it out. No. Right, right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. If I if I turn it on, yeah, I watch it. Because if I'm not, then I'll play music. Like well, if no, I'm, yeah. Julie, so Julie sometimes doesn't like different genres. So if I'll be watching something that's a thriller, oh yeah, this which is I true. know is good, right? I'll start it. And then she'll come wandering into the room and go, oh, what's that? It's good. This is how he got me to watch Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Oh. You're scared. And you're like, wow, that looks really good. Well, I'll rewind it 20 minutes. Okay. okay. And, and same she, with Breaking Bad. That's Breaking how we got Bad. Breaking I Bad, I just couldn't watch it. So, yeah, you're right. That was in the background. <laughs> and then I had to come Those home. are good shows. I mean, yeah. they're such, they're, they're well bad. written, they're well produced, they're well acted. So well done. Yeah. Um, if this week was a book title, what would it be? Is this week is a book title? Is this week is a book title? Um, oh, get ready for Christmas. Hello, goodbyes. <laughs> Hello, goodbyes. I would say get ready for Christmas. Yeah, because now I saw like, all the Halloween stuff was down. Yeah, I'm seeing Christmas stuff up everywhere. Starbucks brought out their holiday lattes. Yeah. you know. Right, I went right. to an open house yesterday for like Christmas stuff. Yeah, and, but I feel like oh, it's my like God, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's funny though because Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, but this year I'm just so ready for Christmas. Like Thanksgiving, I love because there's no expectation, but I took that opportunity this year to get stuff done before, like to get my Christmas cards done. Like even by the end of October, like You're done with ready. Christmas. Yeah, like. Oh, wow. Wow. It's crazy you're, you're ready. The end of December. That's huge. <laughs> I want to try to enjoy the ho- I want to like watch movies right. and sit back and like so I want to get and I hate wrapping so I'm going to try to wrap as gifts come in and like just get it done so that I like I don't want to let things pile up and stress me out. I'm trying to like yeah. ease get it that- like just ramp up, you know? <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's always fun. 
So that is oh. fun. I'm going to dress Christmas cards. Wow, you've inspired me. Maybe I'll do my do ours this week. Yep. No, we have the photo. <laughs> um, Getting the picture is hard. Do you guys have a go-to karaoke song? Oh, wow. Uh, still the one. Shanna Twain. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a great um, one. And she, I, I got to buy some tickets. I know she's on tour now. I got to buy next year. Yeah, that's our song. That is our song. People took bets at our wedding that we weren't going to make it. The, oh. Wow. We have yeah. this from it, both sides, from... One of my bridesmaids and one of your groomsmaids. Yeah, our, our, all our film school friends who have all had decent careers, but they were betting we wouldn't make it. And I said to him, why? He goes, well, because, you know, Juliet's Juliet, and you're you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, Melissa, I'm yeah. so excited for you. You've been really working hard on getting your immune system up and going really well and getting your body in shape. What's your secret weapon now? Well, I've been using... AG1. Do you know AG1? I have heard of this. It's made by Athletic Greens. It's great. It tastes great. Uh, you do a scoop. Oh, no, because I know those veggie things can be not so tasty. This one is pretty yum. Okay. What do you, you like do? put a scoop in your water in the morning, and it, oh my gosh, it helps in so many ways. So tell me what it's doing for you. So with one scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, all kinds of good stuff, right? Oh. It's lifestyle-friendly. You can eat it when you're keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, all Woo-woo. the things. So it's good for me. Yeah, absolutely. And it costs less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit. And I love this. They're sustainable, too, for every purchase, they donate to organizations helping to get nutritious food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry here in the U.S. That's and, amazing. Yeah, they do like climate neutral certified, all that good stuff. That is amazing. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. Yeah, and to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash WWB. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash WWB to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for supporting What Women Binge. Wait, what? how yeah. long have you guys been married? 30, A long time. 32 years. 30, 33, honey. 33 oh. years. Well, well done, Keith. Well that's done. A, yeah, Uh-oh. that's impressive. <laughs> Maybe you missed one. Maybe you need to get her a gift. As my mother said at her 50th anniversary, even prisoners do less time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Very good joke. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, that that is a joke. Yeah. Keith. Um, wait, I was going to ask you guys. Um, did you... What was I going to... Now I totally... I spaced. You just threw me with that one. That was funny, though. That is a good joke. <laughs> um, all right, wait. Let's wait. Next one is... Last one on this is... What is a line from a show, movie, or book that you'll never forget? Wow. Just when I was out, they pulled me back in. Yeah, that's a good That's one. kind of my Hollywood career. Yeah. I broke out of Hollywood three times. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess I'm always like, I'm walking here. No, <laughs> you never yell at a truck. You never <laughs> yell at a truck. I'd be yelled at buses. <laughs> I saw yeah. buses in the middle of the street. What the blank are you doing? Uh, that's the worst. It's not my line, really, but I always think about it. Okay. Um, if that comes to mind often, yeah. I mean, there's so, I mean, there's so many, I'm right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a this or that Amanda's going to throw at you. You ready? Oh, like oh, no. okay. All right. These are a little rapid fire. Do we wait? Do you want us to say it at the same time or separate? Uh, Juliet first and then Keith. Okay, because okay. otherwise we'll be like trying to yell over yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Be like writing. All right. Hero or villain? Hero. Hero. Plans or surprises? Plans. Plans. Caffeine or alcohol? Both. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate or fruity? What was it? Chocolate or fruity? Uh, uh, fruity. Chocolate. Chocolate. Fruity. Uh, dress up or keep it casual? Keep it casual. Dress up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. Yeah, kind of both when I'm writing introvert when I'm outside. I, 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 I call, I'm an extrovert, but if I'm at a party, I'll always drop the code word if I don't like the party. The code word is, let's get out of here now. I think <laughs> it occasionally works. <laughs> Uh, fizzy or flat? Flat. What was the choice? Fizzy or flat? Oh, flat water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning person or night owl? Morning. Morning. 
Yeah, morning. Yeah, we used to, when we were writing, I'd wake up uh, like at 5.30 just to start working. Oh. And so by the time Julia came down at 7, I said, oh, I did this and this. And then the next morning I get up at 5.30, she's sitting in the chair, the writing chair. Yeah, that's <laughs> when we were writing this book. I'm yeah. like, I'm like. I'm getting the chair. The chair is great. It's like, I call it the cancer chair because when I, uh, I had to buy it because when I had cancer, it was the most comfortable chair. And then now it's by the fireplace and it's the writing chair. If you get there early, it's great oh, light. Oh. So you fight over, oh, I'd be yeah. like, I'd tell my husband, I'd be like, you can have it. I'll I'll be in it later when you, you sneak off to the bathroom. I'll <laughs> right. chill right. Right. Chair. I'm not getting up at 530. Yeah. No. No, that's that definitely happened. Yeah. And now, now we each get it for an hour, so we try to be fair. Oh, you take turns. Yeah, it's very diplomatic. Nice. Yeah. But now, but now we're living in a three hundred square foot apartment in in, in Little Italy, so that, <laughs> the size of a closet. Yeah. So it's, it's we don't spend much time here, so that helps. Yeah. It's New York. <laughs> Righty or lefty? Righty. Righty. Staycation or vacation? Oh, vacation. Vacation. Yeah. Well, just judging by my little quiz here, I'd say you two are just meant to be. I think you are. You guys yeah. have like just the right amount of like opposites, but yeah, yeah like, there's such a good balance. Yeah. No wonder you can write all the rom coms. Yeah. Oh, good. So we're gonna make it. I, I, I mean, I think you guys. I think you got a chance. My professional opinion is yes. It's looking tough? promising. <laughs> Amanda's got it good. She's got good perception on these. But you're only like 33 years in, so there's really no telling. <laughs> Give it a few more years. We were together because we had the second baby, so I went off and did some projects. And every meeting I went to, so I remember one particular executive paramount was like, so you and Julia getting divorced? I go, no. He goes, oh, I was going to ask you for our number. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to keep the spark alive, right? <laughs> a little threat. Very, that was very direct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys, I hope we get to do this again. I hope we get to do more movies together. And yes, yeah. we've got to remind everyone to go to Lifetime. They have their It's a Wonderful Lifetime lineup right now. And they are playing Christmas Reservations, Dear Christmas, Christmas in Tune, uh, Very Nutty Christmas. Hi. And, and Santa Boot Camp. And Santa Boot Camp, my new one. And then everyone can go check out the summer of Christmas so they can have a little yes. Christmas read. And that'll be that'll be a great little like weekend read or hanging out by the fire. See, this is why you gotta get your cards done so you can sit with the book. Secret so Santa. Yeah, hot cocoa. Yeah, a little stocking stuffer for everyone. Yeah. And in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, totally. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Loved having Thank you here. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you.